In this movie, we finish off getting the initial rig set for the leg, and we've worked out some of the issues, or I should say I have between the movies here to get it to behave. Finessing is what makes or breaks some decent motion in 2D or 3D types of animation. So what took me just a little bit of time to get put together was actually about seven minutes of finessing to get everything to play right together. And now I'll show you what I changed so you can see some of the logic behind it and use this to troubleshoot maybe some of your own animations when you're working on them. We are in the legs layer right now. Let me show you the action, keyboard shortcut Z, so we can see it in motion right now. And we get some nice some nice knee terminations up there. We're not getting any of the strange little uh, um, empty spots that occur when you're working with unishapes. So how did I get this to behave the way I wanted it to here? And I like little knobby knee, that's intentional there as that finishes off. Well, there's a couple things that were going on. We'll come back and select the bone so you can see, keyboard shortcut B, this front helper bone. Let me show you the constraints for that. I did set up, and I'll move this to the side. We've got a full constraint backwards, none forwards, because I don't want the leg actually or anything to deform, like the knee is hyperextending in this case. The angle control bone, what makes this turn has been linked to the calf. However, the position control bone, and this was one of the little items when I had started out and I said, oh, let's connect that to the thigh bone. I suspected I was going to have to do that, and sure enough, I did. Uh, at that point, it was the angle control, but it wound up being the position control to make that work well. So with a value of one for each, the actual position of where this stays is based upon the thigh bone. So that as the thigh moves up and down, Oh, with that window open, I can't move it. Let me close that. There we go. And as this bends, that helper bone right there is staying in place relative to the thigh bone. Let me select B and go back and check that. We'll select the other helper bone. Similar story going on. This has different constraints connected to it, but it takes its angle control from the calf bone. So as the calf rotates, it rotates as well. However, the position where it stays in reference to the calf bone is based upon the thigh bone. That's the significance for that. If we wanted, you've got the ability here, and this was not explained in the earlier movies, you can go ahead and have the, the scale of the bone get larger or smaller so that its influence is greater or less depending on how much it bends. And that is a tremendous benefit when you start getting into close quarters. You can attach some scale types of finesses there. I didn't do that, and obviously we've looked at bone dynamics before. The last little bit of finessing was to actually make the shape for the calf larger. It was small enough that as it was getting near the thigh, and it was starting to deform based on the helper bones, there simply wasn't enough larger area left over for the calf to bend correctly. So that when I go ahead and do this now, you still see some calf, so if the leg is not fully compressed like this, you'll still be able to see it. So now that everything's bending correctly, the next step for me is to go ahead and decide how I want the lines to form around this. Obviously, we'll want some lines all the way around, we'll want some highlights, we'll want some dark lights, playing off of the same exact things we'd done earlier. I won't take you through that in the following movie. We'll simply have that completed, and then we'll go on to how we go ahead and finally save this master file and start creating some actions that we can use in our animation or for any other part of the animation that uses this frog front view.